Okay, let's talk about some worms today. So flatworms is what we're headed into. Flatworms are worms. There are a few, three different groupings of flatworms. We'll be looking at each of them. Um, all of them have bilateral symmetry. All of them lack a body cavity. They do not have a body cavity. If we were to take a cross section, we wouldn't see that space um, that we've seen in some other cross sections. Uh, flatworms live in many different places. Some of them live in the ocean, some of them live in freshwater, and then some of them live just in sort of damp conditions like under leaf litter, for example, wet leaves. Um, size, huge range. Some of them are as small as one millimeter. A lot of the planarians are. Um, and then some grow to over 20 meters long. It's a really big worm. So the examples that we are going to be walking through for the flatworms are as listed out, the planarians, the blood flukes, and the tapeworms. We'll go through them in that order. So let's look at the planarians. Planarians are little worms that look something like this, and they tend to be very small. They're just a few millimeters long, so definitely, well, most of them are much less than an inch, but you can see them without a microscope in most cases. Um, and flatworms, mostly live in fresh water. They mostly live under rocks and they're just kind of peaceful worms. They, they, they are not parasitic. They just kind of hang out in the water and eat things that come by in the water. Um, moving on to the next group. The next one is a little bit less pleasant. The blood flukes. Here's a picture of a blood fluke. Blood flukes are parasitic. And they have these suckers that you can see in the picture. These suckers allow them to attach to the insides of human blood vessels. Really nasty. And they tend to do this near the intestines. If a person is infected with blood flukes, um, they tend to hang out near the intestines. And the reason for that is because they're trying to take the nutrients that the intestines absorb from food. So this is really nasty. How would a person end up with a blood fluke? Um, the life cycle, Okay, so let's just start with imagining um, a blood fluke that's already in a person. Okay, so the male and female worms, they end up sort of just living together. You can see the female is right there sort of embedded inside of the male. And uh, they release eggs. Those eggs would be released, um, travel to the intestine or the bladder. And then those eggs get released from the body. This is really gross. Sorry, we have to describe this. Um, those eggs get excreted in either the urine or the feces and they end up in water. So in certain countries, in certain parts of the world, um, if the, if the if feces end up drinking, mixing with drinking water, that's a really bad thing. This is one of the reasons why that's really bad um, is because this can end up spreading parasites like this. So the, the eggs end up in the water and then the larvae hatch out of the eggs. The larvae actually infect a snail next and then um, they emerge from the snail in a form that can infect another person. The way that they infect is literally by penetrating the skin. So if a person walks in that water um, or if another mammal walks in that water, the blood fluke can make its way inside of that person and then that person is infected. They didn't even have to drink the water. Uh, it's just the blood flute can travel through the skin directly. So that's a lot of detail. We probably don't need to know all that detail, but in case you were curious, now you know. Uh, let's see here. This causes, this is the cause of schistosomiasis. If you have heard of schistosomiasis, this tends to happen in the tropics um, and it's, it's not a good thing. So that's one type of parasite. Another type of parasite, unfortunately, right, right afterwards, we're going to go through another one, the tapeworms. Tapeworms are another example of a flatworm. And tapeworms are also parasitic. They also have these suckers that allow them to stick. And then on top of that, they have hooks. Um, tapeworms live in the intestines. They attach to the intestinal linings and they also absorb nutrients from the intestines. Tapeworms can grow quite long um, in the intestines. They can grow up to six and a half feet and they just wrap. The intestines are really long, um, so it's easy for them to fit inside of the intestines. Uh, with tapeworms, if you look at the picture here of this tapeworm, notice how its body exists in segments. Each of those segments is kind of a complete unit and those segments can break off um, they have eggs inside 
and the eggs of the larvae leave with the feces of the infected individual. So these larvae would, would then end up on the ground in theory at some point and um, if they end up on some grass that maybe an animal consumes then that animal is going to become infected and it will make its way into the animal's muscles. Then if a person eats that animal, if they don't cook the muscle, um, if they don't cook it thoroughly, like if they eat the meat rare or raw, then that person can become infected. So that's kind of the life cycle for tapeworms. So we have a pretty good, um, pretty clean meat supply in this country, very clean meat supply. But if you're concerned about it, just always cook your meat, cook it till well done, and that'll kill off any of these sorts of parasites that might otherwise have been lurking in it.